Wow, look at this. Well, what an absolutely glorious, glorious morning it is. I don't know if you can uh, make out, but I'm following this. It looks like a path go going along the side of the hill, but it's actually an old, long, put to put into retirement railway track. And it's just a short railway track, but I'll come on and talk a wee bit more about this railway track when I get over to this, well, it looks like a jumble of rocks now, but this old lodge down here. Anyway, beautiful morning. And uh, I'm in uh, Glen Loxie today and I'm aiming to go up a, up a Monroe, it's up here on the right of your picture, Glass Chulican, and it's snow, the, the weather, the weather forecast last night was for bright blue skies, and at the moment, as you can probably see, there is blue skies, but when I woke up this morning, I checked my, uh, my weather app, and it suggested that it was going to get cloudy, and it was going to be foggy at the top a bit later on, and I, I'd be lying if I didn't <laughs> think for a, a few moments when I was lying on my bed to abandon the walk and just think, well, what's the point? It's going to be rubbish, but sometimes you've just got to get up and get going, and you just don't know what the weather's going to do, so, so far, so good. Uh, I might have, you can see I've got my snowshoes with me, I might have to put them on. In fact, I should have had them on coming along here, because this is just, it's just got a crust on it, and my foot's been sinking into it, but uh, I can see there's an, Ar an Argo track down there, so once I get onto there, I'll see if my snowshoes are required or not, but for now, I'm going to crack on down to this old lodge, and I'll report back there. Wow, well, this, uh, this jumble of stones that you can probably see here used to be a lodge, and I'm surprised at how dilapidated it is, unless the snow's really high. <laughs> it's been a few years since I've been here. I've been up the hill, this will be my fourth time up this Munro. And the last time I was here, this was certainly, I mean, it was dilapidated, it was a big lodge. It's called the Glen Loxie Lodge. And it went quite high, I think there was still part of the roof on it, but it's really, really gone into ruin now. It's just a jumble of rocks now. Most of it's hidden by the snow, as you can see. But anyway, th this, was a, this was a hunting and shooting lodge, which linked, or it was linked to the Dalmoney Hotel at the bottom of the road there. And in the 1920s, they built the railway between the hotel, or I, I don't think it was a hotel at the time, I think it was a private house, but they uh, built the railway up to the lodge and they take hunting and shooting parties up onto the moors uh, to save them the walk in <laughs> along the along Glen Lonsey there well, Loxie, sorry and you can still see the line of the railway and I walked along it there so there you go, it was built in the 1920s and I think it was decommissioned in the late 70s, around about 1978 when they lifted all the, uh, the tracks up and what have you but yeah, I'm very surprised, I'll see if I can find an old photograph of the lodge so you can see how how dilapidated it's become really Anyway, this is where the uh, the climb begins up Glen Ch Glen. I'll start again. <laughs> this is where the climb begins up Glass Chulican, which is up here. And actually, there's a nice there's been an Argo cat up here, which has laid some tracks for me. So I might not need these snowshoes after all. And uh, yeah, it's still blue skies. So we'll see. We'll get cracked on up the hill a wee bit, and we'll see if these blue skies remain. And uh, yeah, if we get some views at the top, I'm really hoping for some nice wide, expansive, snowy hill views. So yeah, time to go. Oh, this snow here's a nightmare, though. Wah. Tell you what, it's hard going, but these uh, these tracks that I've been following up the uh, up the hillside have made all the difference. It's made it so much easier than breaking trail, even even with the snowshoes. I've, I've not had to use those yet, but uh, hopefully this trail will go pretty much to the top. But I can see the forecast was right. There is cloud 
just hanging over the summit, which is a bit disappointing, but I can't really complain. Up until this point, it's been fantastic. There's not much of a breeze, and the views are just fantastic. Down, back down, the, the glen I came up, and even over towards Beneglow, and these hills just to the south of me are just absolutely loaded with snow. I suspect it would be a skier's paradise, but... Uh, Anyway, I'll report back a bit further on. I'm going to stop, get my sunglasses on here, a bit of uh, sun cream and a wee bite to eat and then the final push to the summit. Well, I am now about a kilometre away from the summit of Glass Chilokin, and it's just over there on the cloud. I don't know if you'll be able to make it out. As forecast, it's foggy at the top. I've got about a kilometre to go and about 150, 200 metres of ascent into the fog, but this is just away with the fog. <laughs> Forgetting about that at the moment, the views until this point have been absolutely amazing. I mean, look at this. I don't know if you'll be able to make it out, but. I could tell you I was standing in the Arctic Circle and you'd probably believe me with this view. This part of Scotland's just uh, phenomenal when you've got a lot of snowfall. And it does feel very Arctic. It feels like I should be in Greenland or Norway, but here I am in Scotland. It's just a shame the snow doesn't come as often as this, but it's just absolutely massive views. I can see Beneglow over here, it's Captain Cloud, down to Ben Vurichen. Ben Varaki over the back there, and it's just a it's just a winter wonderland. Everything, everything's white, absolutely stunning. And even back down south, over towards Mount Blair and these places, it's just uh, it's just loaded with snow. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to uh, going to get cracked on up here a bit further into the cloud now. I'll report back, hopefully at the summit of the Munro. Right, let's go. So up I went and I followed those Argo tracks and what a difference it made. I think I would have been struggling without their presence. And I gained tight and I was soon into that light layer of fog and haze as I approached the summit of Glass Tulican. It was, yeah, it was a bit disappointing that there was no views but still I wasn't complaining. It was just lovely to see all the snow under my feet. It was fantastic. Ah, finally, here we are at the trig point of Glass Chilokin. Whew. I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit pooped, feeling that a wee bit. And this is, uh, the top of this one's about 1,050 metres. So it's not a small hill by any stretch of the imagination, but I tell you what, it's been... It's just been perfect. The only thing that's a bit disappointing is that the, the summit's in the cloud, but I've still had some great views coming up, which you've seen, and it has, it has felt very, very Arctic-like, as I said earlier on. Anyway, I thought I'd maybe explain why I chose this hill today in the Eastern Highlands. Uh, usually, you know, there's, there's so many sort of variations and places you can go in Scotland, and I don't know if you watched the last video, but myself and Jerry went to do a climbing route. And it was just no good because all the soft snow was around and so much of it had fallen and it hadn't really gone through any of the freeze-thaw cycles. And that's kind of similar to today, so I decided to come up up here to the Eastern Highlands. And as you see, I do have my snowshoes with me, I was, I was hoping to use them, but there's been a lovely track, Argo track, which has meant that I haven't had to use them. And to be honest with you, I've been quite glad of that. I think I would have been a few hours behind the, the time I'm at at the moment without that track. But anyway, the... Um, what I was going to say was the uh, the avalanche risk is still quite considerable and high in places, so I decided to come here 
I know this hill is quite a gentle gradient in comparison to some of the steeper slopes in the west coast and I'm staying away from any gullies or steep sided slopes coming up here so I've kind of mitigated the risk coming up Glass Chilican. And the fact that there's no steep slopes and it's quite a gentle walk also means it's a long walk because as I said it is over a thousand metres high. So oh, here comes the sun. <laughs> Fantastic. Anyway, right, um, I'm going to head back down now. It's quite, there's a wee bit of a breeze up here and it's quite cold. In fact, it's very cold. And it's been a while since I've said that. No, since I've been in these really, really cold conditions in Scotland because the last two winters have been rubbish. So this is quite a nice sea to turn. A wee taste of winter at the tail end of it. So Lovely. Time to get the uh, crack back down to the car. I'm just going to go back the way I came. I'm going to drop down and get a bite to eat, so I'll report back there. Let's go. Quite clear, but you can see behind me. <laughs> Starting to clear me, but I don't think it's going to uh, lift completely. But that's glass chillock up there, <laughs> up behind me. Ooh. Oh, well, I'm back in the sunshine now. Just over my shoulder there, you probably not make it out, but that's glass chillock in there, where I was. Still a wee bit of cloud kicking about, it's bright! Oh, sorry, I'm going to have to put my glasses on. <laughs> so bright. That's an important thing actually in the uh, in the winter, if you're out hiking and there's a lot of snow cover and it's going to be bright, make sure you've got sunglasses on, sun cream, I always put sun cream under my, around about my nostrils. It seems to be a place that gets burnt an awful lot. Anyway, <laughs> I've been up there, I'm making rapid progress down, look at this, just absolutely fantastic. It's just white as far as I can see, and as I said, this winter hasn't really been hasn't really been that that wintry. Really, this is probably the whitest since uh, since the adventure I had in the snowshoes that I've seen the mountains. So, yeah, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna head back down now. It's a bit of a walk out to this one, as I alluded to earlier. The um, the fact that it's not very steep means that you do have to walk an awful long way <laughs> to get in. It's lovely walking territory though. Navigation isn't too difficult. Uh, you're following, following a ridge and you're not really on any avalanche slopes so I'll put up at the end how long it's, how, I can't remember the distance, it's maybe 9 or 10 kilometres isn't it? I'll put that up at the end, but uh, for now, thanks for watching, stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next adventure. Time for me to get back to the car, let's go. Ooh.